as you start to kind of like, I don't know if the right word is devalue yourself, but as you talked, all that rejection kind of starts weighing on you and you start, just like you said, you start going, maybe I'm not what I think I am, or maybe I'm applying for the wrong stuff. I think like, you know, subconsciously or inherently employers will look and go, this is the level you were at. And we get that you're not at that level right now. And if you're just applying for jobs and you haven't done what I'm going to suggest on the front end that you need to do that, you know, if you're just looking for a job, you can look at that for that job anywhere. And that when you do get this job, you're going to have one foot out looking to get back to the job that you used to have. And the only way to really like combat that is to do the same thing that the businesses have spent the time doing in terms of mission statements, vision statements, value statements, like who we want to be as an organization. And I just like, if you go, I actually just launched all these videos and the long videos up on our HR doctors webpage, but I just interviewed Clark Glassford, who is a career coach to help people like navigate this exact process. And the number one, first, most important thing he goes through is two exercises. One is what do you want to do outside of work? Like, what are you ultimately trying to achieve? What does like work-life balance look like for you? You know, you, you talked about two pieces that actually just tied in from another conversation with someone that I'm going to be interviewing, which is like your personal and your professional are the same thing, but different. Like who you are in your personal life is who you are in your professional life and vice versa. And she talked about like, uh, her name's Janice. Uh, I believe it's Otremba who we're going to be launching a, a webcast with her. But it was like, you know, if if we're going through something tough in our lives, as much as we think we're like hiding it from our professional life, it's often there. Right. Like I'm sure you've experienced it before where you've got somebody who's, you know, they've had a passing in their family or somebody dealing with addiction or whatever it may be or a breakup. And like they think they're hiding it and they're not. I used an example with her. I just saw an interview with Brett Favre where he admitted through like an interview that he was addicted to painkillers for like years. And he was using, he said, I think something like 12 painkillers a day. And the average prescription was 30 a month. And so he had like gone to a number of his teammates and said, I need you to get a prescription for me, was buying them from, I'm sure, you know, like, you know, I guess it would be a drug dealer, but selling pharmaceutical drugs or whatever. And when it finally came to the point where whether it was his wife or his teammates that said, Hey man, like, you know, you're, you're, you're hurting yourself. He didn't know. He didn't realize that they knew, even though like he'd be going to a friend asking them for their month prescription. He felt like he had hidden it perfectly from everybody. And everybody knew that was kind of close enough to him that he had a huge problem, but didn't know how to help him yet. And so it just like really resonated with me that like, those things you talked about that like kind of losing of that like self-worth and feeling beat down and all those things can like come through where all of a sudden you're interviewing with somebody and you're answering a question in like a way more guarded way you're doing it in like more of a pessimistic light and again i can't say that you have or haven't i'm just saying like psychologically these things have like a true impact (laughs) 